Welcome to our low equity, no problem lease option training. We'll be exploring how lease options can be a powerful and lucrative strategy for investors looking to grow their real estate portfolios. Throughout this training, we'll dive deep into lease options, how they work and why they present a unique opportunity for investors. We'll discuss how lease options can help investors generate cash flow, acquire properties with minimal upfront cost, and create flexible exit strategies. By the end of this training, you'll have a comprehensive understanding of the benefits incorporating lease options into your investment toolbox. We'll explore a real life case study, highlight potential pitfalls to avoid, and equip you with actionable strategies to maximize your returns using lease options. Now, without further delay, let's dive into the world of lease options and discover how investors can leverage this strategy to build wealth and achieve their financial goals. Now, this is so important. What's the first thing you need to do? And it sounds simple, but take action. Don't take the time to learn something unless you're going to go do something about it, right? I'm going to give you a test. Four frogs sitting on a log decided to jump. How many are left? Four. See, deciding to do something is nothing. Doing something is something. Take the information tonight. Jump into REI Pro. Let us help you walk through this process, especially the time that we're living in right now. It's like we can't afford to postpone success. This is going to be a huge strategy this year. But I want to cover just very quickly there are essentially five strategies in real estate. And I want you to keep in mind, we have like over 30 seller finance strategies. We have two ways to do lease options. People try to manipulate things to make it one big thing. This is it right here. Wholesale, retail, seller finance, lease option, and what we call options, which can go in a lot of different ways. But I want to ask you a question. If you purchased a property for investment purposes, how could you make money after you bought it? You might say, hey, Chris, I could use it as a rental. Maybe you want to sell it. Hey, I could lease option it. That's what we're talking about. I could sell or finance this property. What else can you actually do with this property to make money from it? Besides living in it or burning it down, there are no other possible solutions we are going to talk about lease options. This is going to be the number one strategy for people with low equity. You don't even have to have low equity. You think about how many people, if you can't sell your property, what do you do? As we grow up and start learning about real estate, people think, oh, I got to buy and rent or I buy and sell, All right? That's the first thing we think of. And if you ask a seller, hey, what are you going to do with the property if it doesn't sell? I've had so many people tell me, oh, I would rent it. Yeah, but why would you do that? This is way smarter. Because at the end of the day, if you're looking to sell, this is it right here. If you finance this vehicle, I want to ask you, could you drive the car? Of course you could drive the car, right? Can you change the tires? Yeah. Can you add accessories to the car. Sure. Could you sell the car? And I want you to think about this. The bank holds the title until the debt is paid off. So how in the world can you do any of these things if you don't have legal title to the car? It's what we call equitable title or equitable interest. Anytime you have a signed agreement to buy something, you have this. And that is the beauty about real estate. See, seller financing is all about getting the deed. That's the title for a car example. But lease options, you're not getting the deed. Now think about this though. If you leased a vehicle, you make a down payment, you make monthly payments for the term of the lease, and then at the end of that term, are you gonna buy the vehicle or are you gonna just turn it in? What are you gonna do? I want you to think of this example right here, especially if you're just getting started. That's a lease option. Think about all these other places. How many rent to own furniture companies are out there? Errands, right? 75% of airplane sales are done on a lease to own program. Office equipment, vehicles. It's like, what happened to real estate? So let's define this. This is how we define it. It's a lease agreement 
combined with a purchase agreement. I want you to look at it as two separate agreements. You have a lease, you have a purchase. Through the lease option agreement, a buyer leases a property usually one to three years and then has the right or option to purchase the property on or before the end of that agreement. If you think about leasing a car, it's kind of the same thing, right? Why would a seller do this? Now, these are just going to be a few examples here. And I'm sure once I mention these, you're going to think of a ton more. Think about anybody renting their home. You know what I love about sellers or owners of properties that rent their home? They're willing to accept a monthly payment. Maybe they don't have equity in the house. Think about somebody that doesn't have equity in the house. What do they do? They can't list the home for sale because there's too much commission. They try to do for sale by owner. But if you're in this business, you know as well as I do, most owners are not in the business of selling real estate. Maybe they don't need all the cash right now. You think about somebody that, just think about this. If you don't have much equity in the property, let's say 10, 15, 20 grand, even if we went to closing and you got a check for 20 grand because you have bank financing to pay off, what are you going to do with that 10 or 15 grand? Most people don't know. So maybe they don't need the cash. What about somebody that's getting a job they need to move quickly, trying to buy another home? Maybe they just can't sell the home. If you can't sell the home and you have to cover the payments, what do you do? You typically rent the property out. That's what we do. This is a better alternative because at the end of the day, the seller ultimately wants to sell the home. Don't want to pay capital gains tax today. A lot of people don't even think about this. And we're not talking about, you know, hey, I've lived in my home for two years. I'm going to sell it, take that tax-free cash and move it somewhere else. There are so many properties out there that don't fall under those guidelines. Let's look at why a seller would do this. This is the one strategy you can actually pay full price for the home. Receive a non-refundable down payment, unlike a security deposit, which would be refundable. They could receive higher rent than usual. I don't personally like to do this, but it's possible. No management headaches. Think about the quality of buyer that's coming in. In their mind, they're buying the home. They're not a tenant that doesn't care about the home. This is someone that really takes pride. They just need a little bit of time to get qualified. You don't need the management headaches for this. No or little maintenance cost or repairs. What we'd like to put in our contracts is that the tenant buyer will pay up to $500 per occurrence for all maintenance cost repairs. That takes care of those little things. I have literally been in properties with tenants in the property. And I'm like, tell me what's wrong with the property. And they're like, well, this light bulb has been out for about eight months. And I'm thinking, really? Can you not put a light bulb in there? That's how tenants are, right? Receive positive cash flow. They retain title to the home. Remember, they're just leasing it with the option to buy. We're not, this is not a seller finance where the D get transferred. They could build equity every single month as if they're renting. You charge 0% commission. Your offer may be the only offer and you cost them nothing. Why in the world would you not do this? It's because people don't understand it. And that's the key. Very few people would actually know what this means. What about a buyer? You can get in with a low down payment, the key is no bank qualification today. Yes, in time, they're going to have to get qualified. But I couldn't tell you how many people, they want to live in the house of their dreams today, but they can't go to the bank today. Rent money could be working for you as a rent credit. We'll talk about this. It is optional. Your down payment is credited. Like I said, you're not putting a security deposit down. You're putting, you can put a security deposit down in addition to a down payment, but the down payment would ultimately get credited to the purchase price. Price protection. This one thing right here, I love. So many investors over years of doing this, here's what they say. Okay, we're going to put you in the home and then we will actually do an appraisal when you're ready to buy and then you'll buy it at that price. And I'm like, 
That's ridiculous. Why would anybody in their mind think that's okay? What I like to do is lock the sales price in right now. And if this property appreciates, guess what? Good for you. You get that appreciation. And I'm going to actually show you a real property <laughs> that this happened to. So you get to profit from that. Time to check out the, the home in the neighborhood. They don't pay taxes. Why don't they pay taxes? Because they don't own the home. The owner still owns the property. Keep in mind, they're just leasing it with that option to buy. Now, let's look at us. We're the investor. How do we connect these two dots? What are the benefits of us even doing this? Number one, I say little competition. If I go to an investor and say, have you ever heard of a lease option? Yeah. Have you ever heard of a rent to own? Sure. How about a lease purchase? Yeah. Well, why aren't you doing it? They don't know how to actually work a deal like this. Most investors are a one shoe fits all approach. They do one thing for so long and that's all they do. And here's the problem with that. If that profit center gets shut down, you have no money. You need to have multiple profit centers working all the time to do well. And I'm not saying, hey, just make a few extra thousand dollars a month here. I'm talking about building something. I mean, think about it. They don't make any more land. Real estate isn't going anywhere, right? More deals to work because of this. Doesn't require money. It could, and I'll explain how it could cost some money, but you're not going down to the bank begging for you know a loan and putting down 20%. Immediate cash. I'm going to show you how. You could build a long-term asset over this. I personally like to do more short-term. It's just a personal thing. We'll talk about it. Here's the best part. No lowball offers. How many sellers you talk to, they're like, I don't know. You're not even going to come over to the house until, until you tell me what you're going to offer. And here's the perfect comeback. This has worked so well for me. And I'm going to tell you, so you're going to want to write this down. When a seller says, I don't know, what are you going to offer for the property? I don't know. I haven't looked at it. I can't give you an intelligent offer, but I'm not like the typical investor where they're going to come in and lowball you. We can pay up to full price depending on the property. As soon as I say that, their attitude completely changes. That's the difference. You have multiple ways to buy a property. That's ultimately the goal here. Passive income, of course, monthly income, no landlord headaches. Remember, we have better quality tenants in the property. In their mind, they are buying the property. And at the end of the day, that's our goal. Larger pool of buyers. Now, why in the world would I say that? How many people can't go to the bank today? You may be asking or telling yourself, look, Chris, I can't go to the bank today, but I want to live over here. You just need a little bit of time. Maybe you went through a divorce, your credit got dinged. But look, we all go through problems in our lives. Nobody has a perfect life. This is a great strategy, not only just for you connecting the dots. This could be a great strategy for your own personal home. Controlling the property, not owning the property. Now, ultimately, I always say, hey, I want to own the property. But if I can control a bunch of properties without owning the property and still make money, I don't know about you, but that's pretty good. All right. Why is this a big deal right now? And nobody's really talking about it. I want you to think about this is nothing new. Inventory levels have decreased. And that's the first graph. These are based in the thousands, okay? Higher interest rates. The buyer that could afford a house last year at 500000 today is 400000 So what do buyers say? I'll just wait. We really can't afford the house that we want to be in, but I'm making the same income, if not less. This right here will create more motivated sellers. It's not because people don't want to sell. It's just you have a limited number of, of buyers because of this. This strategy is going to open the door for both sides. All you are learning how to do is to connect those two dots. Ultimately, two ways to do a lease option. The first way is simply putting a buyer together, collecting the difference in down payment. I'm going to explain all this. And then you move on to the next deal. The upside is it's fairly quick. The downside is I say there's only one way to profit. 
if you do, and you probably have heard this, especially if you're learning a sandwich lease option, this is where we're going to stay in the middle. Buyer pays me, I pay the seller. We keep doing this until the buyer actually cashes the seller out, which ultimately cashes us out. The upside is we have three profit centers, and I can tell you right now, the downside, I can't think of any. And we're going to talk about this near the end of what are the pitfalls? What ifs? You know, hey, Chris, sounds great, but we're going to talk about that. I want you to think about this. So you and the seller, right? There's the property. You're in the middle here. Hmm. Maybe I could go find a buyer that actually wants to live in this house and eventually buy it. This is a sandwich lease option in itself. I always say this to my coaching students, finding the deals is key. I don't care what strategy you work. This is the number one thing you need to focus on. Obviously, we can get into REI Pro. Those that are current REI Pro members, you already know this. People that are not current REI Pro members, you're going to have access to every single recorded sale, every property in the United States. Okay. I'm going to show you here at the end exactly how we go in and search for these leads. You could always check current for sale by owners, current listings. It's going to make it a little bit difficult. I want you to think about if you call a Realtor, because we get this question all the time, Bo, is can you do deals with Realtors? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Think about current rentals out there, expired listings. You're going to have a lot more of those today. Contact them, local Facebook groups. Here's a lease option deal that I did. Beautiful home. And I want to tell you just a quick story about this because I think it puts it in perspective of what we're talking about here. So the ARV at the time that I did this deal, 550, it was vacant, divorce situation needed updates. It was listed for sale, went pending at 550, exactly what they were asking. And then it fell through. Went on the market three months. And I could tell you this is in what we call an A neighborhood. It's one of the nicer neighborhoods and walk the property with the owner. And we're walking through. And as I'm pointing out, okay, this needs to be pain. It's livable, nice home, nice area but it's not a major rehab. That's not what we're talking about with lease options. You generally deal with nice homes and nice neighborhoods. I'm not talking about getting picky. There's no in-ground pool, Chris. I'm not talking about the picky stuff. What I'm talking about, it's somebody could move in. We're walking through the property. And I remember this day, we, we get to the kitchen. I'm He's kind of inside the or the granite countertops or the, and all that is. And I'm sitting just kind of in the dining room. And I asked him, I said, let me ask you this, Steve. His name was Steve. Would you consider leasing this with the option to buy? And he looked at me, he said, uh, possibly. And what that tells me is he's heard of it. He has no idea probably what I'm talking about, but he's heard the term before. And that's a huge opening to come in and say, okay, well, just wondering, you know, a lot of people would consider this, especially it hasn't sold and hate for you to lower the price. Maybe we could work out something here. He goes, you know what? I like you. Yeah. Send me some numbers. Help me understand what this is. And I basically left it at that. The worst thing that you can do is try to sell somebody on a lease option because nobody wants to be sold. And I can tell you, when you put the numbers together, and this is all about building a relationship at the home. If I can build that, then whatever offer I create for this property and make it a win-win, he's going to trust me. And that ultimately is the key. Now, what could he do? Now, he could continually try to sell it. Here's the, here's the kicker. I laugh at this all the time, Bo. People put their house up for sale. It doesn't sell. What's the first thing they do? They lower the price. That's what we do. And if you're the owner of the property, you got to be frustrated with the realtor, right? Because they do this whole CMA market analysis, right? Oh, your home should sell for this. They sell you into that to get the listing because everybody's trying to get the listing and then it doesn't sell. 
the buyers aren't there. Maybe if we reduce the price. And if you're the owner, you're probably thinking, why do not we just start there? Why are you selling me on this higher dollar amount? If you, well, you know, it was worth a shot you know, type of thing. Mm -hmm. Now he could just rent the home, but keep in mind, he's going, he's in a divorce situation. You have that other party over here going, no, we are going to sell because we're going to take the money from this property type of thing. He could dip into his savings. Think about it. the property's vacant. There was a mortgage on the property. He's paying taxes and insurance and just basic upkeep of the property. You think about it, you're just losing money. If they decided not to do that, yes, it could go into foreclosure, just taking the basic pieces of the situation. You have two people that hate each other enough to go through a divorce. Somebody's going to say, you know what? Screw it. I'm done. I don't even want to worry about this. Whatever happens, happens type of thing. So it's a possibility here. What you need to do as the investor, obviously, is understand that situation, which I did. Visit the home, go through, okay, what actually needs to be fixed? Because when we run comps and we determine ARV, that's what it would sell for tip-top shape with all repairs already made. And I can tell you, we can pretty much walk into any home and show you something that needs to get fixed, right? And then we're going to structure that offer, which we're going to dive into. So the first thing you do is run comps. And the beauty is with REI Pros, we have access to the MLS. We have access to all the county sales throughout the US. It doesn't matter if you're in a non-disclosure state such as Texas, as an example. And I always bring up Texas because it's a big state. We have to understand what is this house actually worth in tip-top shape? A lot of things to consider. Number one, the most important thing is the square footage. That is the number one thing you look at. So many people get this wrong. How many investors have bought a property, they comped it out here, they end up selling it, and they're like, you know, we didn't make as much money as we thought. We do you use the right comps. If you use a lower square footage of comp, the price per square foot is always higher. So if your home is larger than that comp, you overprice the home 100% of the time. The only way you'd work around that, of course, if you have amenities, you know, in ground pool, fenced in backyard, you have things that obviously will help justify pricing, but square footage is number one. So let's structure this offer. If you follow me a lot, I always say this, if the seller picks the price, hey, Chris, I want 550, then you pick the terms. If the seller picks the terms, you pick the price. If the seller picks the terms and the price, they're not motivated. Follow up with them in 30 days because there's only one thing that's going to change their mind. Time. People's circumstances change in time. Here's the offer. I want you to think about this for a second. I found things wrong with the property. To me, this is full price, 500. If that home that was pending, this home here, went pending and actually sold, just the commission is 33 grand off 550. So it's not like the seller walks away with 550. And then there's closing cost. There's other costs associated with this. And then after I pointed out things that needed to be done with the seller in front of me, I'm able to negotiate a better price. Now, to me, this would be more of a full price offer down payment of 10 grand. I don't generally put 10 grand down on a $500,000 house on a lease option, but I have to get the terms. So if you look at the term, I want to go three years. I want a monthly credit of $500, a monthly payment of 3,700. So every single month that I pay you $3,700, 500 of that, is going to get deducted from the 500 grand purchase price when I buy. The 10,000 that I put down is going to be credited to that 500 as well. If the seller picks the price, you pick the terms. You have to work on finding what that balance is. I always say, figure out the pet peeve of the seller. Is it the sales price or is it the cash down? Is it the monthly? What is their motivation? They can't have everything. 
Now the repairs is $500 per occurrence. So that eliminates those, hey, my toilet's clogged and all those management headaches that people go through of being a landlord. I can promise you, nobody graduates high school and says, ooh, I want to be a landlord when I grow up, right? Nobody ever says that. Exit strategy. If I lease option this property, what am I going to do with it? Or what could I do with this property? Number one, you could lease option it, which I'm going to show you the difference. You could sandwich lease option it, which is probably about 99% of the time. Could I, could I rent this property out? Absolutely. Could I sell the property? Absolutely. Because I have the option to buy, which then will give me the right, because we use our contracts, the right to assign or sell that interest to another party. Could I move into the property and use it as a personal residence? Absolutely. We're going to talk about if I lease option it from the owner, how in the world do you lease option this property back out? I'm going to lease option it from the owner. We're going to lease option it to the new buyer. So there was my offer to the seller. I'm going to sell this property for exactly what the ARV is, even though it needs a little bit of work, even though the buyer's not going to like the paint color. And how in the world can I do that? Because I know how. That's the key. If the seller already knew how to do this, they would have already have done it. If I said this to a listing agent, they would have already have done this. That's the key is understanding how to do this. So I'm going to sell this property for 550 with 20,000 down. Now, why would a buyer do that? I've already told you the benefits. They can't go to the bank today. And to put 20,000 down on a $550,000 house, that's low because this property would be considered a jumbo loan in this area. You can't get in with FHA 3.5% down. Monthly rent, of course, I'm going to run the rental analysis on this and see what it could rent for. And we could sit here all day long and say, well, why didn't the seller just rent the property out for $4,200? Because they don't ultimately want to rent and be a landlord. Because after 12 months of renting the property, they may have to put another 30 or 40 grand into the property, being that the home is in a nice area. Buyer's expectations with nicer homes are way higher than a home that's not in a nice area. Cost effective here. Monthly payment, 42. We're going to do a monthly credit of 250. Now, generally, I don't like to go real high. I want to get as much credit as I can with the seller. I just don't want to give it all away. One-year term. Never, ever, ever go longer than a one-year term with the buyer. You can go as long as you want with the seller, but never put a new buyer when you're staying in the middle more than one year. Because obviously, you know, we do things and check things to make it right. But there's a lot of people that have no clue what they're doing out there investor wise. They go out and they take people's money. They don't even know if the house even has good title and they get in a lot of trouble. Okay, so don't do that because a standard residential lease agreement is only 12 months. Now, we'll talk about what the buyer could do or not do. If they can't buy in a year, we'll talk about that. I'm going to carry over the $500 per uh, maintenance cost repair, stuff like that, because I'm not going to manage this property. I'm going to collect a check every single month for $4,200. And then I'm going to write a check for $3,700 to the seller every single month. And I'm going to keep doing this. Now, I want you to think about, do I own the house? No. Technically, how much money did I put down on this? Zero. And I'm making cash flow. What real estate strategy can you think of where you don't have to put money into it and get a return every single month? Exactly. Next profit center is the monthly payment, right? And then we're going to talk about the sales price as your third profit center. See, if you're wholesaling a property, which is a great strategy, that's where I started, 
you get paid one time and then you're unemployed. You have to go find another property with a lease option. We're going to get paid three times per deal to the down payment. The day I sign this contract, buyer's going to give me 20. I'm going to give the seller 10. I'm going to show you how to structure that in the contract. All right. So I want you to look at the first two profit centers here, which is the difference in down payment and the difference in monthly rent. So 10 grand the day you did this with the buyer, and then you're going to receive $500 a month positive cash flow on this property. Does that sound like a lot? No, this is over a half a million dollar home. This is not an $85,000 house we're talking about. And now I want you to even think about a $700,000 house, a million dollar house, what you could do with this strategy. That's 16 grand if you were to add those two up. With the sales price, you have to keep in mind, remember the down payment is credited plus the monthly credits. Now, if you look at my side, over on the left-hand side, we got $500 a month for 12 months, assuming the buyer buys at 12 months, that would be six grand. So my balance to the seller is 484, whereas the new buyer buying it at 550, 20 down, 3,000 in credits, they owe 527. That's a $43,000 difference. That total on that home is 59,000. Now, for those of you that are wholesaling properties in inexpensive markets, this probably sounds like a lot of money, but it's not a lot of money when you're working these types of properties. Can you do one deal a month? Why do people postpone success? Take the information. REI Pro is gonna walk you through this whole process. It's a no brainer here. Get 10,000 down. Maybe you start working more expensive properties, okay? Because those people have just as many problems as people that don't have expensive properties. I'm here to tell you. If I cash flowed $500 a month, of course, I'm not selling that property because I just signed them up for a lease option. If I did one deal a month, every month for the next 12 months, I'd have 12 properties. Just the down payment, I'd make 100 grand. And then you can see my cash flow each month. Now, Sure, this is assuming everything is going as planned, right? Some things don't go as planned, but I'm going to share with you some of those thoughts here shortly. Because I put them just on a lease option, they have 12 months to do something. Of course, we don't make any money on the sales price. Now, we're going to move into year two because you're going to still do this. As we're selling a property, we're gaining a property. We're going to do this over the next two years. This is just assuming you only did one deal a month for the next two years. But I want you to think about it. It took me three months to do my first deal, which that seemed like forever, by the way. And then I did 46 by the end of the year. I'm just telling you to do one deal per month. For two years, that's only 24. And you made 25,000 on the difference in sales price. You get in more expensive properties, that number is going to increase. If you go into lower price markets and you're not getting a great deal, it's going to be less than this. But that's why I say focus on that middle price range and just a little bit above. We're going to get into REI Pro to show you this. Look how much money that is over that next year. Now we move into year three. Just assume that you went to the Caribbean island, grabbed some Coronas and said, you know what? I don't feel like doing any more deals. You still have 12 more months of the properties that are going to cash you out. So we're really looking at three years here. If you just were to look at these totals, and I know this is quick, that's almost a million dollars. You see how fast it could add up? By getting off the couch, let's go do this business. No more excuses. I've seen so many people, it's like, oh, I don't know, the economy is horrible. This is the time that you should be in real estate. You don't buy when the market goes up. You buy when the market starts to trend down. You have more motivated sellers. Offer gets accepted. We're going to sign a lease option contract, right? Chris, all right, how do we put this under contract? We do have a contract in REI Pro for those that I will tell you it's $50 one-time fee. 
it has cost me a lot of money to craft this perfect contract. And of course, you could tweak it, take it to your attorney. If there's any tweaks that need to be made, the fundamental pieces and the things that I like to see in these deals are in this agreement. It's a one-time deal. And if you're in REI Pro, we also have a training video to walk you through how to fill this out. Initially, we closed the deal at the kitchen table because I want you to remember we're just leasing it with the option to buy. Obviously, exit strategies will depend. Now, how do we actually market and qualify? Because I know people are like, yeah, Chris, you're just going to put anybody in this property. No, no, that's that's how I started, though. <laughs> it's like, if you got 10 grand, you're you're qualified. And I learned a very hard lesson with that. So I want to share with you, how do we actually market and do this? Number one, a lot of people don't know. We actually have an ad writer in REI Pro. It's going to write the ad for a lease option buyer. You can also create a flyer. Zillow obviously can market on for sale by owner sites. Local Facebook groups are also really great. Current buyers that you have in REI Pro. Of course, we always want to be marketing for buyers. We're going to do what's called a rental app and a credit check. Yes, we do this. Numerous companies online will do this very inexpensive. So whatever company you go through, if it's $50, I'm going to charge them a rental, a credit check, you know, application fee. It's all combined together. The most important thing that I could tell you is get with a mortgage broker because I need that person to help my buyer be in a position to buy the home. Bo's built a great relationship with Juan. Bo, if you wouldn't mind, just take a second and kind of share with everybody what he actually does mm -hmm. for these, these exact buyers that we're talking about here. Yeah, so when I do a lease option, the first thing, like Chris said, that I'm looking for is I want to put a person in the property that ultimately can get qualified. I don't want to just take $10,000 down knowing that this person is not going to qualify for the home in a year or even two if I decide to go another year on the lease option. I don't feel like it does justice for them. So I'm in it to help them obtain home ownership. What we do is we, of course, run their credit. We look at where they're scoring. And look, if they're 450, 550, and they're just like, man, there's no way, then I just have to be honest with the guy. Maybe you just need to rent right now. But he can take their debt and look at it. And sometimes it's just as simple as paying off one specific credit card. Because if you're just maxed to the hill on all your credit cards, that's the worst thing, you know, that can appear. I'm, and I'm talking about late payments. But, you know, if you have a $3,000 credit limit and you owe $3,000 on it, that was a lot worse on your credit than if you have a $3,000 limit and you only owe $500. So he's going to look at your overall picture and say, look, I need you to spend, you know, the next 12 months, I want you to pay an extra $50 on this card, pay this one off. And if there is something on their credit that might need to get cleared up, maybe they had a collection to get that cleared up. But once all of that's done, then he can actually go back and have their FICO score readjusted. And then he can actually write the loan. So you may be asking, well, why is, why is he doing all this? Because he's not writing the loan today. Well, I've built the relationship with him. Then they're going to go back to that mortgage broker to get the loan. It may be 12 months from now. But as Chris showed you on that lease option ladder, you're working this business where you're doing multiple deals, one, two a month. So the ultimately, the mortgage broker is going to start writing loans one or two a month. So um, that's one of the things I do. I know a lot of people may not do that, but I like to do it that way. I know that the person I put in there that can ultimately get qualified. Now, <clears throat> let's say they don't do everything that he told them to do and he can't get them qualified at the end of the 12 months. Well, number one, it's technically not your fault that, that this person did not follow the plan, maybe added more debt. But generally, I found that given somebody that roadmap and they're really trying to get to home ownership, they'll stick to that plan because these are much, much more qualified individuals than the standard just renter. And so they really appreciate this help for not only from you, but also uh, from the mortgage broker. And I can't tell you how many times that that individual has then turned around and given me new leads and new buyers that were their friends or family that were really in the same situation. Now I have a buyer that's 
I know I can get qualified and I just go find a house that they're looking for. So I've already got the buyer in place even before looking for the house for them. So I think it's a win-win. Yeah, I think that's the greatest fear for if you're just getting started, where's the buyers, right? Yeah. People could see houses for sale. They could see them for rent online. Buyers don't advertise online. Like you have to go out and advertise to get these people. I'm just telling you, just look at the simple. I've never had a problem putting in a buyer. There are some properties that took a little bit longer than I expected. And there's a lot of properties where it was just like, boom. So yeah, keep that, keep that going that, you know, building your buyer's list. That's always important, but that was really good info right there, Bo, because I think a lot of people, do, they feel that all that weights on their shoulders, like, God, I, I don't even know how to qualify these people. Oh, that's exactly what you do. Get somebody else to do that part. That's not your job. You get somebody else to do that. And there's a lot of people out there that are just on that edge of not quite qualifying that you're really giving them a home that, you know, is kind of like their dream home and they can go ahead and get into it today with a roadmap of how to get the home ownership. So yeah, I, I like doing that. Yeah. And I think a lot of people have this perception that if you make a ton of money, you have good credit. Uh, mm -hmm. Nope. <laughs> Sorry. To spoil that one for you, I couldn't tell you how many doctors made a quarter of a million dollars a year. Like Chris, I can't get financing. All right. So, what if the buyer doesn't buy? Right. So, this is a popular question right here. Could you extend the agreement? Absolutely. Think about it. I always like to go as long as I possibly can with the seller. It doesn't always work out that way, but most of the time it will. Okay, because of the situation that they're in at the time they do the agreement. And I always tell the seller, look, we're, we want to cash you out as quickly as possible, but we need time because we work with buyers that need time. Could you find a new buyer? Just think about this for a second. If I got 20 grand down, and remember it's non-refundable and the buyer leaves, I'll go find another buyer and get another 20 grand down. I bought a foreclosure. I lease optioned it to a real estate attorney. And she put 10 grand down on a, I think it was a $120,000 house, by the way. And she called me after the term and said, Chris, I am so sorry. I have bad news. I'm not going to be able to buy this house. I'm getting transferred <laughs> to another office. I'm so sorry. Did she know she's losing the money? Absolutely. But why isn't she mad at me? Because how many people are actually helping people that can't go to a bank? Think about, it. can a bank help this person? Nope. Can a agent help this person? Generally not. Who helps these people? We do. They're not mad at me. And that's, that's the thing. Of course, we want them to buy. Could we just rent the property? Absolutely. I don't know why we would. <laughs> we just do it on the lease option because we have more time. If I've got more time with the seller, I could always put in another buyer. Could we sell the property? Absolutely. Remember, we have the right or option to buy it. That in turn is going to give me the right to assign or sell that interest. Could we assign the lease option agreement? Meaning, this sounds crazy. I wouldn't do this, but it, it is an option. You know, Bo, I'm tired of dealing with this house, even though I'm making money off of it. Gosh, how much money did I make last year? 59 grand. I think, would you mind taking this deal over for me? I could actually assign the lease option agreement over to Bo if I wanted to. You could move in, obviously. You could technically walk away, but why? on earth would you ever do that? But it is an option. Let me show you a low equity deal. This confuses people. I'm going to tell you, please pay attention to this part. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it because it's, it's really easy. Don't think into it too much. Let's assume for a second, this property, 550 ARV, mortgage 535. Ask yourself this question right now. Could they list this property with an agent? 
Nope. Nope. 33 grand, even if they sold it at full price, they'd have the, the owner would have to go to closing with a check. And how many people are going to do that? <laughs> Nobody. Principal interest taxes insurance payments, 3875. They're asking 545. Why did they ask for 545? Because they know someone's going to offer less, right? Rent value is 4200. How do we actually structure this deal? To me, this is about paying full price here. Forget about any kind of lipstick repairs at this point. We're just trying to figure out, can we actually structure this deal? Absolutely. I'll show you how to do it. There's our offer. If you went to the seller and said, I'll pay exactly what you want. How many sellers do you think would do a deal with you? Now, if I pay you the price you want, I've got to get some terms here, right? But I want you to think about this. We're going to do five grand down, 3,700 a month, zero monthly credit, erase the monthly credit out of your head. We're only going to do one year term because if we can't profit on the sales price, why in the world would we ever stay in the middle? We would. Our goal is to just put a buyer and a seller together. I'm going to show you how we're going to collect some money, and then we're going to move on to the next deal. The agreement now would be between the seller and the new buyer because there's, there's just not much money to be made on this property. But if you have the knowledge, what we're teaching you and what REI Pro is teaching you, you can do these deals all day long. We're going to structure this with the new buyer. But this agreement is ultimately going to get signed with the seller for $550,000, $10,000 down. $3,700 a month, we're going to carry over. We're going to carry over whatever you agree on the monthly credit, the term, and the repairs. Those will always equal out because your only profit center technically is through the down payment. But you have to keep in mind that down payment is credited to the sales price. So I have to increase that price a little bit to compensate that difference. I want to keep it so simple. Look at the offer to the seller. 545 minus 5 equals 540. 550 minus the 10, 540. Those numbers have to match because that's what we promised the seller. Now, I want you to think about this for a second. Is the seller going, oh my gosh, you just raised the sales price and got more money down. Are they mad at you? No, they got exactly what they wanted. So did the seller pay my fee? No. The buyer, they couldn't go and get a bank loan today. And they're only putting 10 grand down on a $550,000 house. Are they mad at you? No. You're the only one out there actually helping this particular person. Now, is it a huge payday? No. It's 5,000. But you have to think about how many of these properties are out there? How many investors right now are actually targeting properties with little equity? Is that like none? So the competition is so low because why would a normal investor ever target a property with little equity? But this seller has a problem. This buyer has a problem. And I have the solution to put the two together. It's understanding how to connect the dots. This is what we're teaching you guys. Let me give you some tips. Verify good title on the property, right? How do you know there's good title on the property? We could do what's called a basic title search. You could do that through a local title company attorney. I'm just here to tell you, most of the time, the types of properties that you're working with and the people you're working with, generally, they care. Like, they're not trying to manipulate people. So most of the time, it's good. Contract. I can sign the contract with the seller today, but it may not go into effect for 30 days. Those 30 days are going to give me time to put a buyer in. 
a lot of times the owner lives in the property and they need 30 days to do this deal. Always market for buyers all the time. Use the buyer's down payment to pay the seller. So if I sign an agreement, you could do this. Sign an agreement with the seller today. 30 days, the commencement, the actual lease option agreement would then begin. I would then give, if you go back to my example, I would then give them the 10 grand, but that day I'm also getting a check for 20. Okay. That's a zero money down deal, by the way. Closing costs are negotiated up front with the seller. Whatever you and the seller agree upon is carried over to the new buyer. Double close all sandwich lease options. That's almost almost every time. Meaning that there's going to be two closings. That will eat into a little bit of your profit. Just keep that in mind. Okay, I did not account for that in the example because I want you to understand it. But yes, there's going to be a little bit of profits eaten up here. Like Bo said, work with the mortgage broker. Generally speaking, generally speaking, you're working with nice homes in nice areas. You need to be focused on where people are willing to go to a bank and actually buy. If I go to a $50,000 neighborhood, I'm going to tell you most banks won't even loan 50 grand on a property, by the way, for a homeowner. Check your state laws regarding lease options. What if scenarios, then we're going to jump into REI Pro and show you actually how to find these deals. And I do this only because I know you're going to probably ask these questions at the end. What if the buyer walks away, Bo? Like, okay, well, let's find another buyer, get another 20 grand down. And we have time with the seller. So if they leave at 12 months, let's assume that I only did 24 month lease option agreement with the owner. I still have another 12 months. What if the buyer destroys the home? I hear this so often. I can tell you I've never, ever had a buyer destroy a home. I have had buyers put in a pool, believe it or not, put fences up, improve the property. I've never had a buyer actually destroy the home. If, could that happen? Absolutely. That's why you need to do a better job at pre-qualifying these people, get them with the mortgage broker, understand where they're at. Generally, those people don't do that stuff. What happens if the home catches on fire? Keep in mind, who owns the property? The seller. They have insurance on the property. What if the seller dies? Well, guess what? There's a legal agreement in place. So that legal agreement would still carry over if that property was then deeded to family. What if the value decreases? Yeah, but that's just what happens. If you bought a house last year with a bank and that home value isn't quite up to par of what you paid for, it, do you call the bank and say, oh, no, 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 no. I can't pay anymore on this because the value's decreased. Now, could you renegotiate? Absolutely. You get what you pay for at that time. That's just the way the world works. We're going to jump into REI Pro. I'm going to show you how to find these deals. We'll go through some basic pieces in here. If you're not an REI Pro subscriber, you need to sign up for a free trial, 14-day free trial. We're going to literally walk you through this process. If you're a member, you know this little dashboard view. You can switch this back and forth. This is kind of our area statistics. This is where I want you to focus right here. So right, I've got 30269 zip code. You could put in city, state, all that good stuff. You could click view last 12 months. You can see some more analytics. Here's my point. What is the medium price point? It's 533. Generally speaking, I want to work with the middle price point and just above that. That's the target market that I'm looking for. It doesn't mean that you can't do a deal at 300,000 or a million dollars. This is the bread and butter for lease options. I want you to take this middle price point. So important. Now, we go over to Lead Pro, our lead generation, and I'm going to just I've already got it here just to kind of make it simple. 
you can see all the different lead types here. Big fan, absentee owners, obviously, you could uh, vacant properties and so on. But if you're just getting started and you're not really sure, you could click the search by strategy and just click lease options and hit search. Now, keep in mind, if you're working nicer properties, depending on where you live, of course, you may not have as many, but you only need to do one per month. And this changes daily, right? So you're just looking for one at this point. And that's the key. Now, I can go to the filter section and we generally like absentee owners, but you could search other lead types here. I'm going to shoot for a single family because I know there's more of them in this area. Now, if you go down to the property values, you're going to see that minimum number is 533. We've already predefined this for you because this is kind of the starting point if you're not sure how to filter. Okay. Now, can you change that? Absolutely. Can you put a max on here? Absolutely. We also set the potential equity at 20%. Now, could you increase the equity? Absolutely. But if you go back to what I said, how many investors target properties that have little equity? <laughs> like nobody, right? That's where you come into play to make a difference. There's a ton of stuff here, but these are the properties that I'm ultimately looking for. If we predefine the filters of properties, the only question mark that I have right now is, are they willing to sell? Are they willing to rent? If they are, I put those two together. I'm now going to move these to a campaign. I'm going to select them all. I'm going to add to a new marketing campaign here, which this is however you want to do this. I'm just going to call it LO. Okay. You could select a campaign type, which will Shortcut, if you order postcards and do direct mail through us, we'll give you some lease option postcards already ready for you. All right, so I've moved those properties into a campaign. Now, if I go to marketing, you're going to see that campaign here. Now, I've got options. I could order postcards. I could send letters. I could clean this list, or I could do bulk skip tracing from this point. At the end of the day, we have to reach out to the owner or someone that's in charge to find out, hey, are you interested in selling? Number one, are you interested in a lease option? If we were to order postcards, I just want to share with you a couple of things. Tons of features here, not going to go through them all, but we have some predefined postcards right here. Now, this no lowball offers, which is kind of funny, you know, <laughs> marketing is all about grabbing the attention. You have to hit somebody. And what I like about postcards is you hit them at the mailbox. You know, a letter, if it looks like trash, you usually sort your mail over the trash, right? These are dedicated templates that you have access to. You don't pay any extra for these templates. So we've already taken the guesswork out of it for you. Now, if you want to go to any others or upload your own custom postcard, you could do that as well. Now, what's the point? We need to get some marketing out. We need to find one person. I always say start with one. Great, you got three calls, but let's just start with one. If you could do one deal, you could do five. You could do five, you could do 20. That's what it starts with is one deal. And now we send marketing out. However, you're gonna market this property. We have to get that out. Now I can actually take that property and save it to the system. So let's say a seller called. So once we get all the information about this property, obviously you got this right here to me, you could do a skip trace individually on this property, but to me is the phone scripts, okay? If it's more of a for sale by owner or vacant or even a rental, we're gonna give you the questions right here. The questions is key. I'm gonna give you a great tip for all the people that have actually stayed here. Never, ever call someone or talk to someone and immediately say, would you, would you consider a lease option? You have to build that relationship. If they have a rental, as in this particular phone script, 
absolutely 100% of the time start with a lease option. But if you drop by a vacant home or it's an absentee owner or for sale by owner, don't immediately start off with, hey, would you consider a lease option? Number one, most people don't understand it. Most people, if, if I have a for sale sign in the front yard, I want to sell it. That's like, that's the main goal. So, but if it's currently for rent, as in this particular script, absolutely say it. Because a lot of people that can't sell, I told you before, they rent it because they couldn't sell. And that's a perfect lead in right there for rental properties, by the way. Okay. Once I do this, of course, you want to go look at the property. We are going to walk you through this process, by the way. And as I complete this step, I just mark, yes, it's done. Now I move into the inspection side. Once I do that, obviously, the offer side is where we can start to run the comparable sales. Okay, so as you can see, I've already ran some comparables on this particular property. We do have public sales and MLS sales. Okay, so you're getting the best of both worlds. We want to go to the lease option offer, and we'll walk you through this process. There's a training video. If you haven't done this before, it's going to tell you what to offer. If you want to analyze the deal of, okay, Chris, I want to lease option this property, but then I want to lease option it back out. Great. So click lease option here in Deal Pro and click lease option here. All you have to do is just fill in the blanks. We'll tell you what the profit's going to be on that already. So you can analyze it in so many different ways, unlike anything I've ever seen. And I'm a huge multiple offer kind of guy. Like I want to, I want to offer multiple things to one property. And if they take the lease option offer, one of my star students, Bo, uh, Rex, 71 years old, by the way, very first property did a lease option. It was a probate where the owner died. We didn't know this. And they had a for sale by owner sign. We actually called and there were three sons involved in this transaction. And my student, he's a go-getter, 71 years old, look out, <laughs> you know, he's on fire. Just do, what do I need to say? You know, I'll <laughs> say it type of guy. And we structured the offers, made all three offers at the exact same time. And we made it to one of the sons. It was their mother that died. There were three sons involved. We sent the offer over, all three of them. And the son called us back and he said, to my student, of course, this is like two weeks in, like he has still doesn't really understand it yet. And the son said, Hey, thanks for sending the offers over. Uh, we, we did talk about it and I think we're going to go with the lease option offer, but what is it? See, they saw the price was much higher because <clears> keep <throat> in mind, we could pay a higher price. And my student, 71 years old, he's like, <clears throat> Oh, you know what it is. It's just a lease with an option to buy. And he's like, oh, okay. Just, I was always wondering what that was. Still didn't have a clue what that was, right? Until we actually put it on paper and do the contracts and stuff. That was his first deal. <laughs> was a lease option and a lease option. This can happen. You need this tool in your toolbox. We'll yeah. share with you the processes, the systems that have already been proven over years. This is what you're going to do. So if you're new to REI Pro, or if you're a current member of REI Pro and you're going, I didn't even know it had that stuff. If you go to the contract side, we have the lease option contract right here. It's a lease option agreement. Okay. You can autofill this information in, you can download it and any kind of changes per state, all that good stuff. You have the information, you have the tools, you have the proven systems all located right here. I hope that you can see, and I want you to, hopefully some light bulbs have gone off for some people that say, oh my gosh, I could totally see this right here. And that's the point of the training is to open people's minds to not necessarily what's normal, but 
what we do as investors in this marketplace, especially what we're going through right now, this is a home run strategy for almost all people out there with little competition, which I love. You think about, it, is the seller happy? Yeah, we could pay almost up to full price because they maybe they're going to rent it anyways, but they don't really want to rent it. They don't want to be a landlord. Is the buyer happy? Yeah, they got to live in the house of their dreams today and now actually work towards of owning the home. And we're happy because obviously we understand how to connect the dots and make money from it. 